Good afternoon, everybody. It's about one o'clock Sunday. I thought I'd check in with you guys to uh, talk a little bit about <clears throat> the uh, the virus and what it seems to be doing on a uh, psychological level. Today, like I said, it's Sunday. We're out on Main Street here, which is normally pretty calm and empty on a Sunday because a lot of the main businesses are closed. Sometimes some of the restaurants are open. And I do see a few cars here and there. Like I said, some people are open Sundays, some people are not. So to compare it to a normal weekend, what it would be, and compare it to what it is now with a lot of the restaurants that are basically just shut down in Florida, and especially fast food restaurants are all shutting down. So this is a little walk and talk a little bit about the thoughts, the inner dialogue that I'm having with myself, along with everybody pretty much, I think, also has sort of an inner dialogue. <laughs> I see the guy down there in the red shirt. He's got a, or I don't know if it's maybe a woman that's got a mask on and gloves. I don't have any mask on and gloves. Well, in my perception, walking outside, it's not like I think that the, 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 night, the virus is just floating in the air. From what I've been able to gleam from the information that I you know you go on the internet and they say it's you know mostly past airborne but it's also uh, this week I found out it also can live on you know countertops and doorknobs and things for a certain amount of hours so if you touch something that has the uh, what would you call it fluids like a bodily if somebody coughed on a table and you touch that and you potentially somehow touched your face I think is what they're saying I don't know that you're catching it from skin contact but you 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 do your own research I'm not gonna sit here and like tell you facts about things that I don't know for sure all I know is when I go to work I put gloves on try not to touch as many things and I wash my hands and that kind of stuff so we're looking at uh, I think I thought Evie's was open but like a lot of people are doing special hours now like Walmart is closed on Sundays now, and other stores are having these special hours, like uh, reduced hours, like Publix is open 8 to 8, Publix is a grocery store, and people are posting their special hours. Like this place is pretty popular, this Evie's Tavern is pretty popular. It says we're cloning, closing down our dining room until further notice. We'll be keeping up the kitchen for curbside and delivery, which a lot of these places, that's what they're saying, is they're doing curbside pickup and uh, like I said this is a pretty popular spot this Evie's as well as there's like a lots of uh, gourmet restaurants and sushi on this thing burritos tacos place right here cask and ale a lot of these uh, micro breweries or whatever you want to call them uh, craft beer places like this are shut down I'm thinking maybe a couple places down at the end might be open but I'm not sure you guys are open for, or you don't work here, right? No, I do. Yeah, we're oh. open until 9 o'clock. But just for takeout, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. So this place is open on a Sunday. I was going to ask her real quick if they have dine-in. Do you have, like, dine-in on Sundays? No, Norm so normally? Usually, yeah. That usually it's always dine-in just because of what the government says right now. We like can't. a shirt. Thank you. Nikki's yeah, we can't do anybody pie. sitting in right now. That, that's basically like the Florida State is saying that, right? State yeah. of Florida State. Yeah, no dining at all. It's all takeout. We can still do beer to go though, so people are happy about that. I was just that. wondering, um, yeah. how many places are open on Sundays? Do you know if Evie's is open on Sunday? Was Evie's, open on Sundays? Yeah. Used to be, are right? Are they not open today? Oh. They said they're not open. It's all closed, period. For, oh, dang. So I don't know if it's a Sunday thing. Yeah, you know, usually they're I'm open just curious. days a week, generally. Um, and then the only other places that are usually open on Sunday are Boca, which is at the very end of this strip. That's like a farm to table place and then uh not many places say, yeah basically everything's usually open food wise on sundays from what i remember at least so but hopefully Thanks. we'll go back to normal soon yeah yeah so she was saying that she thinks that that other place is open on sundays so they're definitely closed and i don't think they're even doing cur curbside today so yeah, this used to not be a big, uh, like, I, I don't know if I said this is Main Street, but it's Main Street. <laughs> Sign over there says Main Street Kitchen and Bath. But this is a definitely a haven for restaurants and all kinds of stuff. 
the lights are on in that place. A lot of them you can see these white signs. But anyway, back to the uh, the whole mental. I was just thinking about before I came here, came out, is this thing has really got everybody got it in everybody's head as well as you know it's a physical thing where people are actually getting sick. But besides being a physical thing, this sign's open over here. What is this place? Pastry art. I don't think they're there's no dine in, but they're uh, open for takeout. Some kind of pastry place. So, um, girl in pink shorts back there. She's not wearing a mask. <laughs> anyway, uh, just getting a feel for, like I said, uh, what's closed, if anybody's really out. A lot of people out walking actually on a Sunday trying to get out. I think because everything's closed, you know, they want to just be out rather than not have anything to do, just sitting in. There's a lot of condos here too. This place is pretty new right down here in the white, this big giant white enormous thing is pretty new. But there's a lot of people that live downtown now with all these condos. So anyway, back to the psychological aspects of this virus is like, it's almost like viral terrorism where it's got everybody in fear. And that fear, it feels like, kind of is a very oppressive thing on a daily basis because we're worried about number one getting sick number two not being able to go to work number three I guess not having supplies like toilet paper and paper towels and certain kind of foods they're running out of well I'm not gonna say they're running out of I, like I said I work at it I work actually work at a store they're not running out but it's being bought up over it's being bought up at a rate that they can't keep up with it I don't think there's no running out all right, there's a guy on a motorcycle. So there's some people actually out in a, on the uh, sidewalk. Looks like that restaurant may be open for outdoor dining, possibly. Or maybe, yeah, they got some beers, I think. Just uh, getting a feel for Because like I said, this is like a really concentrated area for shops and stuff. And I see lots of people. No masks, no gloves. Like I said... Uh, I don't know if some people have the perception that this is a thing where it's just in the air like some kind of uh, nerve gas or something or if it's just people actually perceive it as is that it's uh, it's people breathing on you or coughing on you really is what I understand it's not like if you're in a crowded thing everybody's breath is just all over so there, this place is open Brewster's open for uh, pick up it looks like but they sort of have it blocked off like a countertop this is what I'm seeing in a lot of places that are trying to keep their employees employed through all this so a lot of dog dog walkers a lot of people just wanting to get out in the sunshine because we do have great weather it's a tad on the hot side it's been in the high 80s this week but <clears throat> yeah like I said so Along with, you know, people don't want to die and get sick. So anyway, some I just looked up some, some statistics that as of, tw as of this year, or as of the start of COVID virus, it looks like in the United States, about 2,100, and this may not be super accurate. This is just what I found on the internet real quick. Uh, 2,100 people have died in the United States. Uh, I said that might, that might, number might not be the most accurate number. But that's just a baseline. And to give you a something to a baseline to go against is 9,000 people have been killed from guns since the start of the year, since 2020, January 2020. So that's still a leading thing, and that's not just um, that's not just mass shootings. That's just any shootings including suicides and stuff like that. So to give you a baseline, you know, if you look at the stats for, here's some women getting some exercise out there. To give you a baseline of, a comparison of how many people die of different, you know, if you look up how many people die of heart attacks, how many people die of cancer, breast cancer, web, you know, of uh, shootings, that kind of thing, it kind of gives you a little bit of a, a something to compare a comparative number but we expect it uh, that we, we keep being told that the number is going to grow higher so um, that's what we expect I was wondering if this place was open 
for pick up first watch this is a really popular restaurant this place is always packed I don't know if they do if they normally do Sundays but there's some lights on in here like I said this is part part philosophy talk and part just seeing what's going on downtown they got their little white sign up we're remaining open for to go orders I don't see anybody in there so they might be just closed as of today and they also have free Wi-Fi. Remember when free Wi-Fi was a big deal? <laughs> when Wi-Fi started becoming public, I don't know how many years ago that was, but they, everybody put free Wi-Fi. It's like, oh, I can go downtown and get free Wi-Fi. So anyway, back to the inner dialogue thing, is the, fe the fear that is created by this virus and the, also the media. If you listen to the media, the media is telling us on a daily basis where people are getting sick, how many people are getting sick, how many people have died, you know, where specific locations. So in Sarasota, Florida, they've closed the, they've closed the beaches, uh, most restaurants. Looks like that's a CBD place, they're, they're open. If you don't know what CBD is, look it up on the Google. Um, yeah, this, is, this place is just all restaurants in this block here. And uh, I don't know what these normal hours are. Any Sundays? They have Sundays blocked out, so that may be like a new thing. But like I said, there's a lot of condos down here, so people just like to get out and walk around. We have this is the, the bayfronts down this way. I'm walking toward the bayfront, and I'm curious to what kind of numbers people will be out there. But um, the governor of Florida and you know, the news agencies are reporting that, you know, you should be doing the distance. A lot of this, I'm, you already know, but I'm just saying this as, as a document. So when we go back, when I go back to this video in a year, I can remember what kind of things they're telling us. They're telling us like, you know, space yourself six feet from the next person or whatever the distancing. Somebody made up the term social distancing. And they're putting that into, I, I went to a store the other day called Sam's where they had X's on the floors and they were actually spacing the X's six feet apart so when you went to go line up for the registers it was six feet apart from the next person and you could that's how you could judge and I saw at Walmart they had a, some, a similar thing where they were saying you know keep a six foot distance a lot of the stores I see people wearing their masks and gloves and it's so funny the people that don't have gloves they have like those scrubbing gloves that are like yellow the ones you kind of get to clean your bathroom so very interesting as far as just this is this is something in this generation you know the last 50 years or so we really haven't seen anything that I can remember like this even with SARS and all these other viruses that we that have not spread so quickly but like back to the, the fear thing it, it is like a terrorist fear uh, that sort of spreads everywhere because you keep hearing if you watch the news you keep hearing continually that you know a uh, hundred people have died over here or 21 people in this county have died and you have to pick and choose so much what information you're listening to because some of the people that are dying they keep saying uh, people keep thinking that it's elderly but there's people with compromised immune systems there's people that maybe had other complications along with getting the virus so um, you know, when when you have fear, I wonder what that place is. I think that's some kind of, uh, another kind of like deli place across the street. They look like they have service open. This is a big con condo place. That lady's going into her condo. A lot of dog walkers. So, um, along with, yeah, like I said, the fear thing. The fear thing is really um, very much encompassing a lot of people. Because when, when this first started, I would say, what, about three weeks ago, when it, when it seemed to get really serious in the United States and people were saying self-isolate and self-isolate, um, you didn't see as many people with gloves and masks on. But in the last week, it's really tripled and doubled from what I've seen from working at a store I see just like everybody that ha can find gloves or they just wear uh, like work gloves or any kind of gloves to keep their hands from touching 
um, you know, any kind of objects in the store. And people are using all those sanitizers and they're buying all that stuff out. So it's, it's just an interesting, uh, it's an interesting social, mass social thing where we're just like terrified. Because I don't think, well, in, in my head, I don't think dying is, is uh, the big threat. Although people are dying. For me, my age group, I don't think getting sick, yeah, that's a that's a problem because if I can't work, could be a big issue as far as getting behind on bills and but like I said, it's like mass spread fear of something of a magnitude I don't think we've had a chance to experience in my lifetime. Now let's go back to like World War Two. World War Two, I wasn't there. But speak my dad was there, my mom, my uncles. And you know, from things that I've heard or and or read, it's like I'm trying to make sure I push the right button. This is Bayfront Drive out here, and across the street is the Bay is the Sarasota Bay. Seems like there's not not much of a lack of traffic because uh, a lot of people come here on vacation. I think they're just thinking like, screw this, I'm on vacation. I'm gonna still go outside. But uh, yeah, comparatively, like World War II, we had to actually ration things. And there was um, factories that, you know, quit making cars and they started making tanks and Jeeps and military vehicles and or companies that were, uh, you know, manufacturing companies that switched over to making bullets. And you might have heard of Rosie the Riveter and all that stuff where like everybody just kind of like pulled up their bootstraps for the war effort and converted to making parts for military and uh, meals ready to eat, stuff like that. I mean, if you're old enough to remember or you're a student of history, you, you know all that stuff. They, and there was rationing too. You, had, you couldn't, because they're sending so many supplies, supplies to the soldiers, you had to ration out what the um, community was getting, basically. So it wasn't like there was bread lines, but I think People had tickets and or like some kind of way of getting a certain amount of supplies and that's what we should be doing now because everybody's buying all the goddamn groceries out of the store you know um, and I don't think toilet papers toilet paper is an essential item but there's other items that are being bought up like food items you know and like I said I always worry about the elderly because you know they have more restrictions and you know it's it's going to be an issue because there is they're not as well to endure something like this as the you know somebody who's 20 years old is more uh, adapted you know struggling and and just being able to eat whatever they want and so i kind of worry about that that it's putting a lot of uh pressure on the but yeah so back I'm trying to like process my thoughts as far as the fear thing goes is like you let fear can only harm you as much as you sort of let it as you feed into it the more you feed into a fear of something so I consider myself an expert in fear there's a lot of people out here kind of hanging out I don't see any masks out here either which which seems which seems practical because we're all we, there's plenty of room for everybody to be spread out up here and not be bunched together so and maybe you figure if you know somebody's coughing and they have the virus it will just kind of get blown away by the wind but it seems like there are quite a few people out here they're not self-isolating and I think spring break just got over some girls over there are sunning themselves over there in a red chair just kind of getting some sun this is uh, this uh, Island Park or Bayfront Park. It used to be Island Park, but I think they changed the name of it. This is a big place where they rent boats and stuff. There's some people. Looks like they they're out there partying on the boat, drinking some beers. I think it's probably the younger people that are just like, screw this whole <laughs> screw this whole virus thing. We're gonna go out on a boat and drink some beer and cause some trouble bad dog that's that boat's called the bad dog okay so back to the fear uh, fear theory so I have a disorder which is considered uh, I think what they call it is general anxiety disorder so I can get anxiety from anything 
uh, basically. You know, the, the fear of not being able to pay to a, a, a bill can really put me into like a spin. And so, but this virus really hasn't uh, affected me anxiety-wise. It's more like I'm worried about making money and paying bills. Not, you know, making money in the, in the sense that I, you know, I want to be wealthy. It's just ne making enough money to pay my bills personally. And because I've been uh, struggling the last couple months with the injury and I wasn't able to work for a couple weeks and then I came back and I'm starting to get, you know, things paid off and it seems like this has kind of slid in at the wrong time for me as well as probably a couple other million people, you know, timing's not good for people to be, I don't know if, I don't know if the timing is ever good to be laid off from your job, like the people who are uh, bartenders, people who work at restaurants, people who work at public places where they, you know, any kind of entertainment. There's another uh, restaurant here in the park. Seems like there's a lot of people out here. Saturday, Sundays, usually a lot of people come out to this Bayfront Park. But like I said, if you, so back on the fear thing, I don't watch the news, I listen to the radio mostly. I don't listen to the news, but I don't listen to a news station. I, I listen to talk radio, which talks about things, social issues, sports issues. But since this uh, virus thing has been such a uh, hot topic, they, it tends that everybody's talking about it, regardless of what you're watching, listening to. It's because it's kind of a phenomenon, like I said, in, in this age group. Well, actually, lots of people out here. Yeah, like I said, this this would be a popular weekend because the spring break is kind of uh, right around this time. Officially, I think it was last week, maybe, or the week before. And I think a lot of families come out also. We have a lot of uh, European visitors in Sarasota that come in the spring because the weather's pretty good and it's, you know, it's really nice to be here. Other people are still experiencing the cold. And here we got it, you know, it's in the 80s. So, like I said, it's a real phenomenon what, what is happening right now. Because, you know, if you were born in the last 30 or 40 years, I don't know that we've ever had something that was this threatening, this much fear, this much affecting your daily life. Now, when 9-11 happened, of course, that was uh, 2001, there was a lot of fear that there was going to be future events that were happening as far as the terrorism. If you could, if you could take down the largest building in New York City, what could they not blow up? Like I said, that was 2001, almost 20 years ago, what, 19 years ago? September 1st, 2001, I believe. So there was a, there was a whole mind game going on there, and that's what terrorism is. So that, like I said, this is almost an alternative thing where if you wanted to scare the hell out of the world, inventing a virus that was a fast spreading virus to close basically everything down, it, it works well on your psychologically, on the masses, on the, you know, the world masses. Everybody's just terrified of this because they're just being overwhelmed by the virus. Of course, we already, if you listen to the radio or the TV or any kind of internet news, you know that. But it's like I said, I just, I'm just sort of voicing this out loud because I think we're all feeling this inner dialogue with just like, you know, I don't want to get sick. I don't want to die. I don't want my parents or my grandparents to die. And because of the spread has been so quick, it's just, we do, I, don't, I don't know that any of us have any way to re really rationally deal with this on a psychological level, on a mental level. So you got plenty of people out here. There's a guy with a mask and a black shirt down there, but a lot of... Well, those birds are loud. A lot of people, no masks. I think, the, I think it might be the psychology out here is that we have plenty of space to be apart from each other. And, that, you know, if anybody is breathing the virus, it can be swept out. These, um... I haven't talked about these this year, but every year they have these art uh, exhibits from uh, school children. It's called Embracing Our Differences. I'll tell you, I wonder if they have a, oh yes, embracingourdifferences.org if you want to know about that. So the school kids all, I guess, put in this contest uh, and then they feature these um, 
artworks from around the world. That's what all this stuff is. And so we feature it out here. They put this out here for like a month or two. And uh, like you can tell, it's, you know, school kid. Some of these are like really good art. Some of these artists are really good. And then some of them you can tell are a little bit younger. Sometimes it says the age. This is a ninth grader from Riverview High School. And it says uh, from Sarasota. And some of these are from different countries actually too. Anyway, not to get off the subject, just in case you were wondering why, what these things were. So yeah, so to sum up, you know, you can, as a whole, we can decide to be smart about this, take precautions to keep yourself from the infection, wear a mask, wear gloves, wash your hands, bring some sanitizer if you can find some and just be use common sense about it but I think just being a, a, afraid because everybody else is afraid is kind of a, it's not a good it's not a good way to keep up your morale especially with like I said all these public places closing this park isn't closed but you never know what's gonna happen um, I've heard that some, okay, so my tennis club is a membership club, you know, and that's closed until further notice. But the tennis places that are like public parks, they're still open. And so is this is a public park in the city. So a lot of people, it doesn't seem like that it really put a damper on people visiting. Maybe the, and like I said, I don't know if this is the people that just sort of the mentality is like, you know, we're not going to stop enjoying our lives because of the virus. Or it's just, well, we're outside, so we have less of a chance to catch it. I mean, we're, just, we're all learning. It's, we're learning as we go, basically, about this. And I think along with the medical community and everything else. So just sharing some thoughts with you guys about what's going on in my brain. Maybe the same thing going on in a lot of people's brains. And I know I from like I said I work at a store and I know that from seeing a sampling of the people that come in a lot of the elderly mostly have masks on because they have been repeatedly told that they're they're the ones that are more susceptible have to having serious cases of the COVID-19 and uh, which makes a lot of sense they're just being practical but anyway I just think uh, you know you shouldn't get go overboard and let your fears take hold just try to you know somehow take it in stride as a community and as a nation and just understand that we have to be vigilant and listen to what people are telling us as well as use common sense but also don't I don't know if that's a good thing to say don't shut yourself in a house if you feel that you're uh, immune system is compromised, maybe you should stay in your house. And I did a whole thing about the whole people buying too much toilet paper thing, and you, if you watched the last issue, I talked all about that, how stupid that was. But anyway, just let's all just use common sense and kind of, uh, you know, uh, what am I trying to say? Get out and walk in a park once in a while because I don't think I'm going to get sick doing this, but also just be really careful when you're around people. I don't want anybody watching us to get sick, or I don't want anybody to get sick, but... So anyway, that's, that's my thoughts on today's, uh, today's little podcast thing. Thanks for listening, and like I said, you know, my, my anxiety is somewhat peaked on, you know, the things that have been caused by the virus. Like I said, the financial burdens on a lot of people is really sucking right now. The last time we had this was when we had Red Tide in here, and that's a whole different thing. But anyway, stay safe, guys. We'll see you in the next video. You take care.